Hello and welcome to uh, National STEM Club. Uh, this week uh, we're going to be looking at Cracking Codes uh, Part 2. Now you might remember just before Christmas uh, we looked at Caesar ciphers, uh, so make sure you check out that video uh, if you want to see more uh, ideas about how to actually encode messages, how to um, encrypt them and then how to decode them as well. So in this video, we're going to look at two different ciphers, two different ways of coding secret messages, one using mobile phones and two using something called the pig pen cipher. So my name is Michael Anderson. I work at the National STEM Learning Centre in York uh, and let's get started. So for this session, you'll need uh, just a pen and uh, or a pencil and a piece of paper to write some things down. No other equipment is required uh, apart from your brains. So I want to start by talking about mobile phones. Now, um, my mobile phone today is very smart. Uh, it can do lots of different things. But when I was younger, uh, I didn't have such a smartphone. I had an old brick, didn't have a touchscreen in any way. So what I had to do was just use the keys, uh, the buttons uh, to send messages and to make calls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, if you look at any keypad now, whether it be on a smartphone or on a regular phone, um, you'll see that they've got letters above the numbers. So above two. There's A, B, C, all the way to nine has W, X, Y, and Z. Now, when you were sending text messages, these buttons uh, were the buttons that you could use to actually compose your message. So if I wanted to say something like hello, uh, what I'd have to do is find where H was, which is above the four, uh, and press four twice. So four, four would give me uh, the H. Three, three would give me E. Then I'd have to do five five fives, so three fives to get the L, another batch of three fives uh, to get the L again, and then six, six, six um, to get zero. So that would predict, or that would say hello. So technology moved on a little bit um, and predictive text came in. And that meant that actually instead of, so instead of typing out all of the numbers, I just had to type in four, three, five, five, six, uh, and the um, software would predict that I wanted to say hello. So let's look at another couple of words to see how it might work. So if I wanted to type uh, STEM club in, what you might want to do is pause this video uh, and have a go and predict what, uh, what buttons I'd have to press. Uh, you can pause it now and I'll reveal it in just one moment. OK, so here's what you would type. 7 for the S, 8, 3, 6, 2, 5, 8, 2 for the B. Uh, now, obviously, you probably put a space in between the six and the two, but they were the numbers that you'd have to type in. And if somebody saw this uh, string of numbers uh, without knowing um, how you'd actually uh, entered it, without knowing you were using a mobile phone, uh, they'd have no idea what on earth um, the numbers corresponded to. So it could be a good way of encoding messages. Uh, and then all you'd need to actually decode it uh, is a keypad. So you could look at it and say, oh, right, well, that means uh, the seven is probably either going to be a P, Q, R, or S. The eight is going to be a T, U, V, and almost piece together the words by the options to say, well, oh, right, STEM. And because of the context, you might be able to then predict, well, the second word is going to be club, because it seems to either begin with an A, B, or a C. So you can use the kind of context then uh, to decode it. OK, what I'd like you to do is have a go at deciphering some of these hidden names. 236, 269, 7285 and 726. Again, pause the video, see what uh, which names uh, I'm going to actually uh, uh, send via text message using these numbers. Uh, and then once you think you've got all four, press play and see if you were right. OK, how did you get on? So the 236 uh, was Ben. Um, the 269 was Amy. 7285 was Paul. And then I've highlighted an interesting one here because 726, you could have been texting Pam or you could have been texting Sam because it's hard to tell whether you wanted the P or the S for the seven. So there's a little bit of ambiguity here with these um, phone ciphers um, and you've got to almost know what the person is going to be referring to to be able to piece it back or at least have a good idea about what the messages might be. So it's not just a one to one uh, cipher like the Caesar cipher was. OK, so your turn. What I'd like you to do 
is write your own message using the mobile phone cipher. And if you want to post it in the comments below, you can. Uh, or if you want to uh, swap your message with uh, a friend or somebody else so that they can decode your cipher, uh, then you can do that as well. So again, pause this video if you'd like before we move on to the next part. Uh, compose your own message using the keypad numbers uh, and see how it works. OK, part two of this uh, video is all about something called the pig pen cipher. And I've got an example here uh, in grey. It looks completely gobbledygook. It looks like an alien writing. Uh, if somebody was to present this and you didn't know anything about pig pen, uh, you'd think it was probably from, I don't know, Futurama or some kind of sci-fi uh, TV show. But actually, it's a really clever way of uh, hiding secret messages um, and we'll see how it works. So what you've got to do is you've got to draw four different diagrams. The first one is just uh, two lines going down, two lines going across, which makes uh, space for nine different squares. Uh, the second one is the same but with some dots in and then the third and fourth are just horizontal crosses uh, with the second one having dots in as well, just like you can see on the screen. And then we can fill in the blanks using uh, the 26 letters of the alphabet. So A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, H and I go in the first uh, diagram, fill in the second one, carrying on with the alphabet all the way to X, Y, Z, or W, X, Y, Z in the last diagram. So all of these strange symbols correspond uh, to the letters as drawn in uh, the diagram. And it's called a pig pen cipher because it looks a little bit like a pig pen uh, if you saw it from above. So the letters being the pigs uh, and the lines being uh, the pen um, that's uh, keeping them in. So uh, let's have a look at this message. Well, the first one is a kind of V with a dot. Where is that in my diagram? Well, it looks to be a W. The second one is a H because it's just um, uh, that kind of uh, weird uh, N shape. The next one is a kind of backwards L that corresponds with A. So we've got W, H, A, and then we've got um, a kind of sideways V that's going to correspond to the T. So the first word in my uh, hidden uh, message is what? Uh, if you want to pause uh, this video now and work out the other uh, missing parts of the uh, puzzle, Please do so and then join me again in a few minutes when you've figured it out. OK, so the uh, hidden meaning of the message, if you did work it out, uh, was what does this mean? Um, which is a strange message to encode, but still. Uh, and notice that the question mark is still a question mark, so any punctuation, any exclamation marks, things like that uh, would still be the same. So that might give people a clue as to when a sentence might end, whether it's a question, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, this doesn't have any numbers uh, in this particular cipher, so it is just letters. Uh, so there are some maybe hints that people could use. And of course, if they recognize pig pen uh, ciphers, then they probably would be able to crack this if uh, they knew you were using pig pen as well. So let's have a play around with it. Uh, let's have a go at looking at some different words, uh, some different messages that we can uh, code and ones that we can decode as well using Pigpen. So uh, the first question would be, well, what would your name look like in Pigpen? If you want to pause again, have a go at writing your name in Pigpen, uh, see what it looks like uh, and then show it to somebody else, see if they know what on earth it might be. Uh, then please feel free to do that. Or if you want to do that at the end of the video, uh, you can do that as well. OK, so this is your challenge. Uh, in that grey box, uh, I have um, uh, a message. I can tell from the uh, question and the exclamation mark. Uh, it looks like the first part is a question and then the answer is underneath. Pause the video, have a go um, at, the, uh, at decoding it using the cipher. Uh, and you might want to write the cipher down if you've got it, uh, if you want to keep it. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's on the screen for you as well. So have a go at this one, pause the video, uh, and I'm not going to reveal the answer to this one. Uh, you're going to have to figure it out yourselves, uh, but hopefully I'm pretty confident that you'll get the right answer. Okay, 
Final thing with Pigpen, now you know it, you can make your own messages. Um, so try writing your own messages using the Pigpen cipher uh, and uh, give it to somebody else to see if they can figure it out. It might be a really nice way of writing a letter to somebody uh, or even uh, take a picture of it and send it via email uh, and correspond using Pigpen cipher. Uh, that way, nobody will be able to uh, read your messages unless, of course, they are familiar with the Pigpen cipher. Uh, OK, so what have we done uh, today? Well, we've looked at two different ways of coding and decoding secret messages using the mobile phone cipher and the pigpen cipher. I hope you found these two uh, interesting. Uh, please feel free to share what you've done in terms of uh, secret messages, uh, either using the pigpen or the mobile phone cipher, uh, and uh, enjoy the next video. And finally, if you enjoyed these types of things, you might want to consider what type of careers will use this type of idea. Now, um, the topics that we've covered in terms of coding and ciphering uh, rely very heavily on both mathematics and on computing. So uh, consider um, studying those uh, subjects, either um, at GCSE or beyond, uh, if you want to get into those types of activities. Uh, and you never know, one day you might work in the Secret Service uh, for MI5, MI6, uh, GCHQ, etc., uh, to try and keep the country safe uh, by um, making sure that our communications are safe uh, and disrupt the uh, somewhat safe communications uh, of any of the UK's uh, adversaries. Um, but uh, on a slightly less James Bond theme, companies need cybersecurity employees too in order to monitor their online networks and make sure the systems and software are safe uh, and help protect uh, just uh, everybody from uh, criminal activities. So coding, those types of ideas are really, really important uh, today. OK, so that's it. Um, have a go at coding some of your own messages using the codes that we've seen today, but also have a think about how you can create your own unique ciphers to keep your messages safe. Pigpen is um, a famous cipher, but you might want to invent your own cipher that nobody else uses apart from you and the person who you are messaging. Uh, if you do create your own cipher, make sure to share your project or tweet a photo with us. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see it. I hope you enjoyed this session. Bye now.